Inshallah, we continue in this session to see Surah to I will ask Sheikh Sahab Mahmoud to recite it. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بأصحاب الفيل ألم يجعل كيدهم في تضليل وأرسل عليهم طيرا أبابيل ترميهم بحجارة من سجيل فجعلهم كعصف مأكول صدق الله العظيم صدق الله العظيم وبلغ رسوله الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين الشاكرين قلب سليم الله سبحانه وتعالى in this surah he is saying to us that have you, O Muhammad, not seen how your Lord dealt with the owners of the elephant? And we explain that. Alam yaj'al kaidahum fi tadlil. Did he not make their plot go astray? That is important. To make... When Allah said, O oh Muhammad, haven't you seen how your Lord dealt with the owners of the elephant? Ashab al-feel, ashab al-feel, owners of what? Of the elephant. Means, uh, what is the uh, hugest animal today? The biggest animal. Is that the elephant? Dinosaurs, they extinct, they, they disappeared. So there is nothing bigger than the elephant now. Even the dinosaurs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how much they were big and huge, Allah destroyed them. They're gone. Now, this Ummah of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam, according to all calendars and according to many discoveries, that it is not more than 7,000 years now from Sayyidina Adam to here. So, and between, in this 7,000 years, there is no dinosaur. The huge is the elephant. And Allah is saying to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Haven't you seen what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, how he dealt and how he made with the owners of the elephant? Means, owners of the elephant here means, Owner of the greatest that you can imagine, because these people they brought the elephant to destroy the Kaaba, and the elephant for them was so huge that in, he will knock the Kaaba, and Kaaba goes. So it means that. Whatever human being thinks himself is huge as elephant, if he is going to come against Allah's will, Allah will destroy him as if he is not living completely, he will destroy him from us. That's why he said, Alam Tara. Haven't you seen what Allah has done with 
the people of the elephant, the owners of the elephant. I mean, whatever you can be strong in your money, <coughs> in your weapon, in your oil, <coughs> in your uh, uh, finance, in anything, if you are not going to be a person respecting and understanding the relationship between you and your Lord, Allah will bring you down. Namrud. Namrud. What Allah did with him? He was the, in his time, the biggest or the highest authority. And he came against Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. And he said, I'm going to kill your, what you say about someone in heaven uh, and the sky, some creator, I'm going to go and kill him. So what he did? What he did is mine. To do what? He built a minaret to fight Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in his mind, Allah Rabbukum al-A'la, like Fir'aun. I am your highest God. He cannot see anything anymore. Today, those who are on authority, Muslims on authority, they cannot see anything bigger than them. They think they control everything. And Allah, and they are Muslim. And they have to realize that they are nothing. If they need success, they have to believe that they are nothing without Allah's support. So he built a minaret and went and he took a bow and an arrow on top of the minaret and shoot it in this case. And Allah sent the bird and hit. The arrow hit the bird and blood came on the arrow. When it came down, he went and said, oh, look. I killed your God. What you say about Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is arrogant. He, he thinks himself the biggest. Anyone who thinks himself the biggest, Allah destroy him. Today there are many people. They are thinking themselves that they are the biggest in everything. They know everything. They understand everything. Their mind is above everyone. Their intelligence is higher than everyone. Their money is more than anyone. They control everything. And what, like Namrud, what Allah did with Namrud, he sent one mosquito. Nine virus. What? 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 Nine? What's nine virus? Small virus. He didn't. At that time, there was no what's nine virus. It was like that. Allah sent it. What it did? Begin to eat. It entered from his nose. And it goes inside and went where? Where it went? Where in the brain? And that there is in the brain a small chip. Allah's chip. What you call it, doctor? In the brain there is where the intelligence is. There is one a very small point of intelligence. Hypothalamus. Doctor, what? That's a <laughs> What is it? Hypothalamus. That's it? One of the areas of control. Ah, one of the area, one of the areas of control. He sent that mosquito there. And it was enough. 
was eating his brain, eating his intelligence from Emptying, downloading, uh, downloading or uploading? Corrupting. Huh? Corrupting. Corrupting? Making riches. Taking all information from him. Leaving him stupid. <laughs> Not stupid. All what he has downloaded through his life, they took out. That's more mosquito. What Allah greatness is, Doctor. Look, if you see an ant on the floor, look for sure. If you follow where it goes, you find it will find a play a food. As soon as it finds that food, it take it and go back to its place. Who 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 guide that ant? Who tells that and that there is food there? Allah He is the provider. He sent sustenance to everyone. People complain they cannot get more than what Allah can, what Allah wants to give them. If Allah wants to give you the whole dunya, He will give it to you. They came to one. Uh, To one uh, very pious person, he is known as a, always like a someone who makes people to laugh. Nasreddin Khoja. They brought him a big chunk of money, and he said in his time, and they said to him, "The Sultan is asking you to distribute that money on the community." So, it's big money. It's a pillowcase full of gold. At that time, only gold. There is no paper like today. Today, no value. If ever anything goes wrong, these papers finish. Is that? What you do with it? Nothing. You will throw it. So, he went. Looking, looking, studying, studying, and they said, the other said, what's going on? Look, look, the poor people are waiting in line. He said, yeah, I'm studying. Wait, you asked me, Sultan asked me to spend it in the right way. I'm going to spend it in the right way. I cannot waste it. So he looked, he looked, he looked, he found one rich person. He took a lot of work and gave to him. <laughs> then he found another rich person he took one big bunch of gold and he took it then one poor guy came and said he gave him one coin other poor one coin other poor one coin rich one whatever left he said what is this this is not right you see, Allah Sultan said to you give it in the right way he said oh you are crazy Allah is giving the rich and not giving the poor. You want me to give the poor? I'm giving to whom Allah is giving. This means, this means if Allah wants to give, Allah will give. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, with wisdom he, he is giving. With his wisdom, he gives you ten, for example. With his wisdom, he gives him five. With his wisdom, he gives the other one twelve. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what he did with Namrud, he sent that mosquito to eat his money. Eating, 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 eating. And then what happened is that he began to have headache. So no way that his habit goes without people beating him on his head. Beating him day and night, beating him day and night, beating him day and night, until they broke his skull. Skull is finished. And that mosquito, that small mosquito that looked like a pin of a needle, came out from his nose like a pigeon. A big bird coming out. Means 
To Allah, there is no great. Greatest is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even they are owner of elephant, the people of elephant. Wherever they are hiding themselves behind their, their hands, or behind their wealth, or behind the name of Islam, they are, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bring them if they are harming Islam and Muslims. Even they are Muslims. Understood? How many people today are hiding themselves behind the name of Islam? Doing their own things under the name of Islam. And Islam is innocent from them. So wherever you think you are huge, Allah will diminish you in making you nothing. So the people of the elephant were pushing the elephant to destroy the Kaaba and the elephant coming to its knees. Doesn't move. They plot something. Alam yaj'al kaydahum fi tadmir. Did, it not, did he not make their plot go astray? Their plot is to make people not to make pilgrimage to Kaaba, to make pilgrimage to Kulais. Kulais is a city in Yemen where he built that big church. He wants all the Arabs to go and make pilgrimage there instead of Kaaba. So he has to destroy Kaaba and turn people his city, Kulais. So he came to Abdul Muttalib and he said, I want to fight. He said, well, don't fight me. Allah, there is someone who owns that. It's not me. I own my camel. Give me my camel. Take everything. You want the Kaaba? Okay, take the Kaaba. Can you take it? Try you want to destroy Allah's home? Destroy. Show us your power. It is said in the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu and it is mentioned in Ibn Taymiyyah's book, which Ibn Taymiyyah did, did deny many of these ahadith. But he mentioned that. Man ada li waliyan, aw man ada li waliyan, azantuhu bil harb. If anyone comes against one of my awliya, I will declare war on him, Allah said. That's for a man. If he is a pious person and you come against him, Allah declare war against you. What do you think about Allah's house? He came to destroy Allah's house, Allah destroyed him. What he said to him? He blocked everything. He made his plot, his conspiracy, as if it doesn't exist, destroyed it into pieces. It means any conspiracy you want to do, be careful. Allah is seeing you. Hearts of people are full of conspiracy with shaitan. They work with shaitan. Ego works with shaitan. Our egos, they are working with shaitan. Every one of us is in his mind, he, he thinks that he is the most advanced, knowledgeable, intelligent person. He cannot accept an advice from anyone. You accept advice? No. You accept advice? No. You accept advice? I don't stop that. No. No one accepts advice. Is you an ocean? <coughs> no way. You cannot. You you your 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 ego or your your pride in yourself that you have built through your childhood that you cannot accept 
any advice from anyone, even from your father and mother, you think that you know better. Everything you know better. Your father tells you, you know, my son, I have experience. I am 50 years, I am 60 years, I am 70 years. You are only 30 years, I have experience in that. Ah, what you know? You are a backward, awkward or backward? You say demode. What's demode? Old fashioned. Old fashioned? an old fashioned. What you know? You know nothing. I know everything. This is what a time what we are living today. We cannot accept advice from anyone. Only advice from ourselves. If you ask someone, you did that mistake, say no. He will find for you an excuse that it was not a mistake. This is how we are, this is our nature. This is a human being nature. Not to accept anyone's advice. And in Tariqa, in Tasawwuf, they, they go high, very high, in implementing the verse of Holy Quran, Allah wa Rasul wa amri minkum. Obey Allah, obey Prophet, and obey your leaders. They implement the highest obedience that they can, means they have no, they do not use their intelligence or their mind in front of any advice from any person. Not only for, from their shaykhs, no. From anyone. Anyone say to you this, say yes. Anything. They say black, uh, black. White, white. Red, red. They go like, like the flood going, like the, the river, when, how it goes down the stream to the ocean. They are running, uh, uh, the, what we call murid in Tariqa is like a flowing water waiting uh, it impatiently wants to reach the ocean. So it is moving all the way in the river. It faces rocks, it faces wood, it faces anything. It try to move. It cannot be stopped like a flood going downward until it reaches the ocean. When it reaches the ocean, can you see the river anymore? It's finished. That is a murid in Tariqa. Always going down like that. Don't go up like uh, salmon fish. Going up, struggling, struggling, struggling against the flood. Obstacles, struggling, struggling, struggling. At the end, what happened? It will come up and down. Go slowly. With the flood until you reach the ocean, then Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. You will be swimming in the ocean of Bahr al Qudra. From Bahr al Qudra, Allah created us. You go back. Awliya Allah going back there. Swimming there. So, don't let your ego and shaitan plot against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what Allah said. Alam yaj'al kaydahum fi tazweed. Did not he make their plot go astray? Yes. Wa arsala alayhim tayran ababib. And he sent against them birds in flocks. It is said that these birds There are many, many descriptions of these birds. They say, some of them they said like bat, bat, what you call this? Bat. Some of them they say is like 
uh, Zarzur is like a small bird, it's black, what you call them. Some of them, that are like, are like, like you see them on the street, in the middle of the streets, eating flesh, but, uh, black colors also. Crawls. Some of them, they say they were blackbird and they have yellow uh, beak and they have green neck. So, different description of these birds. And they come in, in flocks, in, in groups, black together, green together, yellow together, it's different types of birds, that no one knows them except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He sent them. How He sent them? Allah knows best. وَأَرْسَلَ عَلَيْهِمْ فَيْرًا أَبَابِيلٍ He sent them He sent them these birds from every place and they said that they were coming they from the ocean from Jeddah they are coming Jeddah is by the water coming from Jeddah to Mecca where Abraham is so they are coming in flocks from the ocean. Why from the ocean? Is there anything under ocean? Under water coming from the ocean and going up? What they are carrying? Why it's from ocean? Ibn Abbas said that Ibn Abbas said Tayran Ababil Fawjan Bada Fawj kanat tahruj alayhim min al Bahar. Then flocks after flocks used to come to them from the ocean, from the sea. And Ibn Abbas said another time, Tayran Ababil, uh, birds, like flocks, that it has hand, like the hand of man, and it has, uh, these, the two keys, and you have these smaller, what do you call these? The front one? Like, the teeth of the uh, Saba uh, tigers and uh, and the f uh, lions, their teeth, how big they are? It's fangs. It's, huh? Fangs. Fangs. It's, it's fangs. They have fangs and they have like hands coming out. He said that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to destroy the people of the elephant, Allah sent to them Birds created came out of the of the sea like bats with hands. Every bird has three stones carrying three, three rocks, pebbles. One in his uh, mouth, which is fangs with the fangs, and two with his legs. Then came over the head of these people and was, uh, you know, the bird giving a sound, big sound, sahab, crying, shouting, and dropped what it is in its legs and what is in its mouth. Any stone, every stone was hitting a person. As it hits his head, it comes from his bottom. It goes all the way. Like, and he described it, and I was surprised how he described it like that. He said, look what he said in Arabic. فَلَمَّا رَعَوْهَا أَشْفَقُوا مِنْهَا وَسَقَطَ فِي أَيْدِيهِمْ فَرَمَتْهُمْ بِحِجَارَةٍ مُدَحْرَجَةٍ قَلْبَنَادِكَ الله أكبر. تَقَعُوا عَلَى رَأْسِ الرَّجُلِ When they saw these birds, they were worried, afraid. And they were trying to run and Allah and the birds were throwing these uh, stones. And these stones, pebbles, was going uh, 
running, spinning. And spinning, what, how? Huh? Like a bullet. Because a bullet spin. And look in Arabic what he said. He said that فَرَمَتْهُمْ بِحِجَارَةٍ مُدَحْرَجَةٍ كَالْبَنَادِقٍ uh, throw them with uh, stones spinning like banadik bundukiya is what you shoot with is a weapon is a, like a machine how he knew about machine gun when it's published this book <laughs> <laughs> this is uh Imam Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti in 8th century Hijri. Huh? Uh, how do we have Banalik at that time? There is no Banalik at that time. There is no weapon. There is no machine gun at that time. How they predicted that? In the story of... Uh, uh, and this is the story of Ibn Abbas. أخرج ابن مردوي عن ابن عباس قال أنزل ألف لام ألم ترى كيف فعل ربك بمكة and then he continue about وأخرج ابن أبي إن أبي حاتم وأبو نعيم في الدلائل عن عثمان بن المغيرة بن الأخنس and قال من كان من حديث أصحاب الفيل he mentioned the names of those who recited that hadith all the way until he comes he they were throwing them with pebbles spinning very high speed from uh, machine gun, from banadik. Banadik in Arabic is machine gun, isn't it? You are Arab. What's Bundukiya? Rifle. تَقَعُ عَلَى رَأْسِ الرَّجُلِ فَتَخْرُجُ مِنْ جَوْفِهِ It hit on his head, it goes from his body. وَأَخْرَجَ أَبُوْ نَعِيمْ He said that I saw the stones on Ummu Karaz al Khazaiyah. She said, I saw the stones that, that the, the Allah, uh, these birds were throwing, and it was red. What is the red? What is the sign of red? It's bullet, it's fire, it's showing fire. So it was red, spinning in a high speed, coming out from rifles. How they knew that? Uh, is the description of weapons was in 1400 years ago? How Prophet Sallallahu knew that? How the Sira knew that? Is that something beyond imagination if you don't read this you will never see it you go through it blindly as it is here translated in English <laughs> and he sent, sent against them birds in flocks striking them with stones of baked clay that's it finish Doesn't give meaning. So means Allah is sending them something that is fiery. When she said she saw it red and spinning with very high speed, spinning and fiery, and what is happening? It was exploding in them, going one place because of the high speed. It was going from someone else, from other place. Like, like for example now, if you have a pistol, uh, six millimeter, you shoot on something, on someone, for example, what happened? It will hurt him, but it doesn't go from the other side of the body, it stays there because it is, it's not hot and and not fast enough. But if you use what else? Higher? More powerful? Uh, what you have other, other powerful? I don't know this kind of weapon. 
Whenever you use higher power for 9 millimeter, sometimes it might stay inside still. If you use this, uh, what they call it, Colt 45, 45, it go from one side, go to the other side. Means what kind of, uh, if you shoot, if you shoot a person, <laughs> but this is saying it's shooting from the skull and it goes all the way through the system and go from down. Yani it is uh, it is moving uh, three or four feet inside the body. So it is not even a, a, a Colt 45 because if you hit in the skull, it goes, it might stuck in the somewhere in the middle, in the chest, but doesn't go all the way down. Means what kind of weapon Allah ordered these uh, uh, birds to use that it can go from top, from the skull, all the way spinning through the body and coming from the, your back or whatever, from down. And as it is moving, it is destroying. Because what he said after that verse, فَجَعَلَهُمْ فَعَصِمَّهُمْ He made them as if they do not exist. Disintegrated. They're gone. They cannot, they, they do not appear anymore. أَخْرَجَ أَبِنْ مَرْدَوَيْ وَأَبُ نَعِيمَ عَنْ أَبِي صَالِحْ in the ahadith they state who said what that he saw in the Ummu Hani he saw uh, with one of the ladies which is she is the daughter of Abi Talib she is his daughter from these stones uh, these pebbles that they were these uh, birds were shooting and he said من تلك الحجارة نحو من قفيز مخططة بحمرة. It was like a a, a red uh, stone uh, with ray uh, خطوط lines red lines and on every stone it is written the name of that person and the name of his father. So it was only hitting specifically what is written or the proper person, the name of that person, it doesn't hit the other one. So everyone has a different magnitude of that bullet that's coming on him. Someone might have different, someone might have different. Aerodynamic. Uh, it might be. <laughs> What's aerodynamic? Like, like the car that would have uh, a shape like a wood. Yeah. Because the line is only if it's a square. مخططة بحمرة كأنها جزء ظفار مكتوب في الحجر اسمه واسم أبي. It has lines. Aerodynamic. It's wood. And the most important is the name and the name of his father. Means that that bullet doesn't hit this one, it will hit that one because it has to hit the right person. Guided, guided yeah. Like today guided the uh, uh, guided the missile. Smart 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 bombs. <laughs> so Allah sending fourteen hundred years, fifteen hundred years. He showed that I am the bomb designer, not today people bomb designer. <laughs> I am sending smart bombs with their names guided. They will hit the right person, the right exact uh, position. Huh? With no mistakes. Of course, no mistakes. It hit the right person. Where is these birds to come now? See? From one surah. 
Still we are in one surah. Allahu Akbar. Now what happened? Smart, smart bombs designed to break. Look, these aeroplanes that they, they landed in, into the World Trade Center and into the, in Pennsylvania. And Pantheon. And Pantheon. Nothing left of them. Nothing left. This is technology because of the extra uh, hot, the heat, the extra heat that they produce through that high quantity of gasoline air, uh, air jets, gas. So this uh, this ashab al they have been hit with these pebbles spinning in that high uh, intensity of heat, burning them completely. They are not appearing. They, they don't know where they are anymore. They disappear. They are gone. And they make them ka'as al ma'kul, like a leaves of, you know, the flower, or the wheat, when you cut the wheat with these machines, to take the seed and what leaves, the straw, scattered everywhere, you don't know what is what, disappears completely. And he made them like an empty field of stuffs, stuffs, S-T-A-L-K-S. Stack? Stuff, like yeah. Of in which the corn has been eaten up by cattle. Means nothing left. What kind of uh, smart bomb? They didn't do smart bomb like that yet. This is more than neutron bombs. Why it is more than neutron bombs? Because a neutron bomb, when it comes down, it hits and might take a big city and take innocent people with it. Is that? But these heavenly neutron bombs, smart guided bombs, it takes only the evil doer. It picks them. That technology, no one yet, uh, they, they were able to do it. To pick up the right person from 100, 200 or whatever, 1 million, and hit that person alone. And burn him completely, he cannot appear without affecting the one other around him. This is more technology than neutron bomb. Yeah, for sure. Huh? What do you call that? Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> because it's written his name and his father's name. Allah. Yes. Means if you have 1,000 people and one person is bad and this bird come, throw that, it will hit that person. It doesn't affect the whole other people. Means فَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْحَافِظَ وَهُوَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِ الْرِسَالِ الله خير الحافظ وهو أرحم الراحمين Allah is the best خير الحافظ He is the best of protectors He is the protector and He is the most merciful So if He protects you means if you human being you give your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do everything correctly without bad desires or intentions and build up a good relationship with everyone Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not harm you He will protect you Allah khayr al-hafid He is the best of protectors He will protect you even you are between one million people, he will protect you. <laughs> so why people are afraid today? And they say, oh, this, if this happens, everyone uh, is going to be in a bad situation. No. 
When you forget, Allah Khairul Hafizan wa Warhamul Rahim. Allah is the most protector, is the best protector. You think Allah will not protect the good people? Be good and Allah protects you. If you are not good, then it's up to you. You are the one who are losing. He made them like a field of corn where the cattle ate everything. They, they, they are gone. They disappeared. May Allah forgive us. Allah forgive us from bad people and protect us from what is coming in front of us. So what happened? One day being killed and destroyed, what happened? Huh? Disintegrated. They brought their wealth. You know when they when they ought for fight always? All these fighters of these old times, they used to bring their wealth with them. Jewelry, gold, they carry it with them. But if they win, they establish a new territory, they need this wealth with them. So when they lost, what happened? They left all their gold everywhere. So what happened? Sayyidina Asman ibn Affan, they say he was one of the most richest. In the time of Prophet, is that how he got his money? Because his father was collecting all the gold that was left when they killed Abraham and his people. And also, the grandfather of Prophet was rich and he was the leader of Quraysh. So he was also collecting all the gold. And wa Abu Mas'ud as taqafi the third one, these they were the most richest people in this uh, in, in, in Quraysh tribe at that time. Three of them, they were the richest because they collected all the money that they have left. So look like look like when someone believe and put his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah save and protect him. Mercy him and give him words. Abdul Muttalib put his faith in Allah. He said, Ya Rabbi, this is your home. Save it. I'm going to save my cousins. <laughs> so Allah protected him and gave him more. <laughs> that gives us a, a finally, it gives us a sign that anyone who depends on other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a loser. Abraham depended on the elephant, he lost. Abu Talib depended on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he won. So always depend on your Lord, you will be able to win. <laughs>